there is a gentleman that is online for those funk fans that are out there. Um, and he may be listening right now. I don't know if he'll have an opportunity to come on or not. I did invite him to come on. Uh, he said he would probably uh, come in. Uh, but so we, he may join us at any point in time. But if the name Dr. GX sounds familiar to it at all, is a gentleman by the name of Scott Goldfine. And he has, runs a website called funkinstuff.net, F-U-N-K-N-S-T-U-F-F.net, funkinstuff.net. And he is, you know, there are certain people that really just, just live by what they say as far as being well, well, well versed in funk music. And Scott is one of those guys that's just he is like a walking encyclopedia for funk. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's a walking encyclopedia for funk. And he has interviewed everybody from, I mean, just Cameo and Earth, Wind and Fire. And I mean, uh, Isley Brothers and uh, Gap Band, Greg Boyer, Fred Wesley. I mean, he, he, he has interviewed everybody. I mean, it's just, it's amazing how many people that he actually sits down with and spends some really, really deep quality time getting into these getting into these artists and really just kind of just dissecting the music and just spending a lot of time with it and the content that he has really <clears throat> fit really really well with funkatopia and what we're doing and obviously we want to be you know we are funkatopia believe it or not we're not princeatopia you would think we are uh but we are funkatopia so we we really really want to keep expanding that universe for ourselves as far as getting involved with um uh getting involved with more funk artists other than prince it, it, we do a lot of prince stuff here and that's primarily because of prince's involvement with this uh website and with just with everything that we've done i mean prince was an avid supporter of funkatopia and so now that he's gone a lot of people continue to come and and we're we're, we're grateful for the supporters a majority 90 percent or more of our supporters are print supporters and so you know we're, we're always going to to cater to our audience because that's that's who we are but we do actually have a lot of people that are out there that are huge funk fans massive funk fans and um we've i feel like scott really brings some really phenomenal I mean, insight and his history. So we're going to be trying to figure out ways. We haven't we haven't brainstormed on it yet, but we're going to try to um, figure out ways to uh, just try to figure out ways to incorporate what he's doing into Funkatopia and vice versa, and just try to just just kind of marry some of the powers that be, and uh, hopefully got some see some good things down the down the pike. We don't know what those ideas are going to be. We we have not met and actually had had those discussions yet so um i did want to in, invite him on and but a lot of people have not heard of him but so i beg of you if you have an opportunity to check him out please visit his website it's funkandstuff.net f-u-n-k the letter n n letter n funkandstuff.net be sure that you go to his site and check out the laundry list of interviews. He, he has like well over a hundred interviews that he's done with everybody. You definitely got to check it out. Uh, absolutely check it out. And that's Scott Goldfine. And uh, he's a uh, well, matter of fact, Rob has pulled up, uh, <laughs> pulled up fucking stuff.net. Look, see, look at all this stuff that he's got in there. I mean, these are all the people that he's, he's been interviewing and he's got so much stuff. I mean, everybody from Ohio players to, I mean, the content this guy has is just unbelievable. And it's just so in-depth, and he really goes into really paying attention to uh, all the artists that are out there. And he's just – he's an incredible dude, and he's literally a walking funk encyclopedia. And uh, I'm actually surprised that there's not a lot of people that are in the chat room right now going, oh, my gosh, Scott Goldfine, because he is just <laughs> – he's a funk legend. I mean, as far as, like, a, a, a reporting – person is concerned because he's just he speaks with everybody i mean he's sat down with everybody fred wesley maceo just i mean it's it's unreal everybody that he's sat with and of course he's also uh spent time with a lot of the, the the funk people that we have too he's interviewed uh uh wally safford here uh 
he's there's so many people that we interviewed together, not together at the same time, but uh, you know, anyways. So nice. if if he has an opportunity to come in, that'd be great. We'll spend some time chatting with him. Uh, actually, why not just go ahead and add him in right now? What's up, Scott? <laughs> hey, Chris. Can you hear me? I can. How you doing, man? What's up? Um, you got a Lakers hat on. Why do you have a Lakers hat on? I guess, yeah. I Might as well, right? Join the crowd. <laughs> you doing all right? I'm doing good. I am getting some echo, though. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. sorry about that. I can't. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it is what it is. But uh, anyways, yeah, uh, Scott Goldfine is an amazing individual who has tons, uh, just tons of interviews and everything. And I mean, how long have you been doing these interviews for some of these, uh, some of these funk artists? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just getting an echo. I think I need to find some headphones. Let me. Um, okay. Uh, well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff while you get some headphones and stuff. And uh, we'll, we'll see you in just a minute. Scott is back with us. I think he may have um, headsets working now. So he may or may not have um, his echo figured out. Scott, you going? How's you got it? You good now? Hey, I think we'll be good, man. How you doing? Hey, here we go. Doing good, man. Oh, perfect. So I was telling him about um, all of the stuff and how how long have you been doing all these interviews, these funk interviews that are on your website at funkinstuff.net? Yeah, well, that site's been around about five years, been doing the show about four. Of course, my love affair and um, involvement with funk and music goes back decades, but that's how long the, the website and show has been around. Yeah, I think it was kind of a lot. Now, was it like some type of turning point for you or whatever that, that had you decide I, I need to, because for me with Funkatopia, what ended up happening was, is that, and probably this is a little bit the same with you, is that I kind of went online and I was trying to find a website that talked about funk or that dealt with funk and I, I, there was just nothing there was nothing out there that i i felt like was really in for there was a lot of things that were out there that was a little bit too minutia like the 45 collectors were you know they would like dig deep deep into like the you know 60s and really like early 70s levels of of, of funk and just one hit wonders from that era um, so there was a lot of that stuff that was just maybe a little bit too minutia, but like there wasn't really great website from the high O players or great websites about Parliament Funkadelic or, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire. There was, you know, some just hit and miss. So I decided to put Funkatopia together. And, uh, it, what, what was the, the turning point for you as far as creating funk and stuff.net? Well, I felt that way my whole life, you know, going back to high school, that funk was always underserved, never got its you know, due respect and it's due attention, especially from the mainstream. So, you know, it took forever for any books to come out on funk. It's always been sort of underground and pushed to the side. And it's been my, you know, passion, you know, forever. So you're absolutely right. There was not enough out there to serve it. And for me, you know, I had been away from music for a while while I, you know, raised my family. So I was immersed in it. I took a little time to step away, moved from Los Angeles, where I had grown up and been immersed in the music. And um, yeah, I decided I got to get back to it. And, you know, I, I got a crusade for the funk and uh, all those great artists that have given me so much throughout my life. And I feel, you know, need to get more recognition. They don't have enough representation in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They don't have enough representation, respect anywhere, really. And so, so many of these musicians also, I noticed, were starting to leave us. You know, the great ones from the 70s and even to the 80s were starting to disappear. And it was happening with barely a ripple in a lot of cases. So I really wanted to give back as, mu as much as I could to the music and the genre by shining the light on these great artists. Yeah, and I think that's really, really important too. Is is just trying to get in there and and interview some of these guys. Like I, um, you know, getting an opportunity to interview some of these classic artists. Like I got an opportunity, uh, I guess, a couple of years ago to interview Lamont Dozier, uh, and Lamont Dozier was responsible for so many of the Motown hits that that he was involved in in writing, 
And a lot of people did not wasn't work, aware, but he's getting up there in age right now. And then you got these guys like Lee Fields and and these guys that are just funk icons. And and you're right. I mean, you look at Sugarfoot and the fact that he passed away. Just like you said, Sugarfoot passed away with barely a ripple. And you you got to think there's got to be something. There's got to be some way that we can we can make sure that you know at least their their history is documented and just making sure that um it's i i'm just so glad that there's people out there doing it i I really kind of feel bad because i I would love to get in there and do a lot more interviews uh one of the things that i've kind of found and you've probably found that out too is that you know you also have this audience component because it seems like the the funk audience is spread really really thin around the world so you could interview somebody that's legendary in the funk world like i have a bootsy collins interview that i just did like two three months ago and i still i still don't have 200 <laughs> yeah, i got george clinton went on this you know what i was like sitting there going what am i gonna wear and i almost put on my parliament fucking telling shirt <laughs> yeah i get george clinton went on but you know, i did a Bootsy collins interview literally two months ago or two or three months ago and i still haven't gotten i don't think i still don't have 500 views on it and i'm like what the hell is happening you know what how do you not you know, and yeah. it's on YouTube, it's not like it's only on my website and it's, you know, not in indexed worldwide. And you, know, you get people that are looking at this interview and going, why are there only it, it, it's it the yeah. the music genre is literally dissipating before our very, very eyes. And you it, it takes somebody like Bruno Mars to kind of revive some of that. But then you've got, you know, it, it, it's it's important to pay to pay respect to the masters. And um, I'm so glad that you're, cause you're just doing a phenomenal job. You, everybody here, once you are done with it, this show ends at 10 o'clock. What I can tell you is that please, please, please go to Scott's website at funkinstuff.net. It's F-U-N-K-N stuff.net. Make sure that you go to that website and definitely check out some of, I mean, he's got a laundry list of amazing interviews. And uh, I'm just, I'm just so glad that somebody's out there doing it. And then you reached out to me. Uh, you were saying, we, we've been we've been talking back and forth, throwing emails back and forth now for probably the better part of a year, I think. And uh, I think we're we're gonna we'll try to brainstorm something to try to join forces and try to see if we can make some kind of massive get, get some attention to this to this genre that just seems to just keep fading away. It's it's. It, it it's a lot. It it really is a lot to to take on, and uh, I, I think there's a lot of great people out there that are doing it, and you're one of them. And I'm I'm honored to to try to work with you in some form or fashion for sure. Well, thank you, much appreciated, and uh, you know, thank you for the exposure and um, the olive branch, and yeah. uh, you know, any way we can team up, you know, like I help any way I can for like the funk center in Dayton and you know anything I can do uh with any funk cause I'm all for it so you know we can try to bound together and be like the funk avengers or something you know and help uh do more maybe together than uh things are happening independently but um the most important thing to me is just you know getting funk and the artists as much recognition as possible globally and um <clears throat> you know recognizing them while they're still with us and uh preserving the legacy for when they're not with us so we will definitely be in touch for sure we'll definitely be in touch and try to figure out some way we can work together Dwayne sends his love he said he used some of your interviews for his second book so i mean right there that is 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 an incredible sponsor because Dwayne is pretty much every single book that he actually writes is it's like ends up being like the pinnacle of like for instance his uh prince purple rain era studios have you read this book no i i don't know if you can see i got a lot of books back there but not not that one yeah you need to have dwayne needs to get you this book because uh this is like one of like an encyclopedic encyclopedic version of it's like in, it's like chronological order from 83 84 everything that went on during those purple rain era studio sessions 
and it, and it's the way that he embeds it with stories and everything. It's just it's incredible. It's just incredible. Uh, but yeah, you need everybody's here saying. Uh, even Terry's like, uh, have you written a book? <laughs> you need to write a book. <laughs> Who me? Well, I have. <laughs> I have this book. Oh, uh, there you go. Everything is on the oh, one. Nice. There you go. So, and people can get that on Amazon. I didn't even know you had that book. How did yeah, I know Amazon. that? Okay, so that's what you need to do. You need to head to his website at funkinstuff.net. You need to pick up his book. Everything is on the one. Uh, man, I we're, just expect more from Scott and Funkatopia together. And uh, Scott, thank you for taking time to, to pop up today. And you and I will be in touch at some point this week. And we'll figure out exactly what that's going to look like. Outstanding. And thank you to all your viewers and listeners. And keep the faith in the funk. Absolutely. Right Thank you so, so much, Scott. I appreciate it, brother. All right, guys. See you later. Take care. Man. Take care. And uh, what was this uh, that you posted up here? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's on his website, man. That's uh, that's uh, Dr. Good Times there with uh, Bootsy. There it is. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, there's, a, there's another one there with him and uh, – ah, crap. There's another one there with him and uh, – George. Well, you know who that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was I was actually glad to get a picture. And I like this one. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah.